Alex Hansry here. It is November 5th, 2016, and this is probably going to be one of the more powerful podcasts. And, you know, I've talked a lot about what I believe their plans are. White slavery in the United States. I talk about the post-2020s. I talk about uh, certain areas being hit harder than others. I talk about uh, a karmic connection. I've talked about how people have treated me in response to my warnings as if I'm the evil one. I've talked about how this has uh, really startled me and in some ways emotionally scarred me. And I've talked about how I've tried to survive inside feeling that this is a warning that I need to deliver not only in America, the world, but certain, uh, certain places, places like Portland. I also want to warn those against doing harm to others because of the karmic consequences. And so, you know, I've, I've been speaking to that criminal element of the U.S. Armed Forces that have sexually abused Afghani women and sold little girls and little boys and, and raped children in front of their parents in order to, uh, you know, extract a false confession of terrorism. All this stuff has been admitted and has been done in our name. So in this podcast, I'm going to reflect on those things and... This is going to be a, a highly concentrated podcast, and I'm going to try to stay away from emotionalism and stick with the very things that I need to relate to you at this time. So I spoke in the last podcast about Hillary Clinton, how the New World Order is using her uh, to prop up a meme that a white devil woman, blonde-haired, blue-eyed, white person, white woman in America, um, did all this. And when I say this, I'm speaking in a future tense. She could be placed in power to do something that, again, it's, oh, it's about her and her agenda instead of the actual people behind her. And so I see how they've really played up this narrative. So whether um, Trump is selected or Hillary, we still see the role that she has played. And she's really provided a lot of cover for other globalists behind the scenes. You know, while people like like Soros and others have, have, have been in the limelight. They're not the true powers of the earth. They are mere puppets. And there's a reason. There's a reason why they use certain individuals, certain human beings to absorb the hate, negativity from the people. And I see Obama coming up. It's like, oh, okay, here we go. They're going to make it look like a black guy did it. And this could really end up with some uh, highly charged racial overtones by the time this guy is done by, of course, making it seem like, oh, no, the black Muslim guy did it. Not Barack Obama, the puppet of the New World Order, but a black Muslim. So here we see the, uh, the white woman devil, husband of the rapist, both of them, uh, rapist adulterers, Kathy O'Brien with her story, and I'm not saying that it's not true. I'm saying Hillary Clinton is not alone in this. So what I want to review is some of the things that I've talked about over the years, though, before this current election cycle, before all this, when I was warning four years ago, something is coming, something is coming to Portland, places like that, in a World War III scenario to where white slavery is the aftermath of the currency collapse, of the currency wars, of the bombed out cities, where humans actually resort back to one of the oldest professions, and, and we're talking human trafficking, not prostitution, human trafficking, women being sold. There's reasons why I've given this projection. I'm going to go back to some of the very basics. Look at how we're divided we are. Look at how they've turned man and woman against each other and see how organized it is. It's for a reason. Take note of the other warnings of 1984, not just Big Brother, but Big Brother, what? Monitoring Relationships, the movie 1984, in addition to the book, The Hidden Relationship, and how this was forbidden by the state. Now think about the authorities of this world and beyond the physical and, and how, you know, Eve Lorgan and the love bite, alien interference in human relationships. There, there is something, I would say, beyond the physical that is tearing us apart. And not just romantic relationships between man and woman, but, you know, family relationships, family connections. We are, we are in a epic, historical, monumental time of divide and conquer between men, between women, between the women and men, between the men and the women. We are living during those times. 
So there's many ways in which, you know, the whole money and love thing, which is a longer conversation. I guess I've heard they've done experiments where they taught monkeys about the power of money. And it wasn't long before they were robbing each other and prostituting themselves for more money. Once the money actually had some sort of a functional immediate use for them. So there's, there's countless ways in which we've seen this monetization of love destroy our society. And there are now hundreds to thousands to tens of thousands of, of videos discussing this on YouTube, but they're not addressing the root cause and they're not addressing where this is going. We're going to keep this podcast centered on where this is going. Now that the what is has already been discussed and all the pain And now they've armed these women with the false protectors. And in a world in their minds of so much oppression, in some cases there has been, now there seems to be so much liberation through the cell phone. As we see the cell phones get more and more expensive and long are the days that we're concerned about being tracked. Now it's like a positive thing in case we're abducted. I am actually more concerned that the cell phones themselves will aid and abet the future human traffickers that will be using data from the cell phone companies that will be tracing the signal from the cell phones to actually find the people that they may have already profiled. What are some of the reasons why somebody may be profiled with the very likely potential that they need a certain amount of specimens or speci women's for some of their um, off-world, of course, they can also have a base within the Earth or somewhere, and they can, you know, make it seem to the world that they're taking people off planet, but there could be something else going on, or of course, an off-world base that is not on the Moon, and that is not on Mars. So, without going too deep into that, that's also in the collective consciousness and concern that there's a hybrid program ongoing and potentially, at the very least, about to begin or expand. And so we see Elon Musk talking about, you know, oh, we're going to be taking millions of people in the next few years. How and where? How do you know this? But they seem real confident they're going to be taking millions somewhere. That's a clue something is up as they time this with World War III. So I think that they have uh, profiled a certain amount of Americans for actual abduction. And then, of course, there's those that they're just vol- like V the miniseries. Come on down and get your new prize. Time for your DNA upgrade. In the orgasm of a lifetime. I got a golden ticket. I've got a golden ticket. I'm not going to get abducted by the Chinese and put in the international sex slavery ring. I'm going off planet. There, there, there could be some of these scenarios. And I feel this. I feel this is coming, so I'm just going to share my truth. So with regards to the threat coming to the modern woman, especially American woman, especially white American woman, especially those bearing certain genetics that are sought as desirable for hybrid programs. First rule, number one, before anything else, mind your karma. Now is the time to clean up your backyard. And cease and desist from creating any additional negative karma. Because it's things like that that's going to mean the difference for a lot of people. And I'll also say that I think that the universe sometimes intervenes because we cannot deny these, these times in history in which horrible things have happened to seemingly good people. And so I am saying more on these podcasts, sometimes it's not just karma or our understanding of karma. Sometimes the creator takes us out of the game because we've seen too much. And we may look at death or this idea of being murdered as the worst thing in the world. And how do we really know that until we get to the other side of, of that actual situation? So I would say fear not. Fear not. Before we get even deeper into this podcast, fear not when you walk in the light and you do good. And I'm not here to spread fear. I'm actually trying to help people. And I understand this is not understood. And I have to push forward even more with this warning. And if you support the concept of people being, being warned about this, then maybe you should share this with others or warn others as well. And try to help them see, you know, whether it be the positive in themselves, the positive in the world. But I see... 
the herd animal humans. I'm I'm not insulting. This is this is the reality. Being boxed in, politically boxed in. This is your candidate. You know, and, and these are the fears, terrorism, the, these people from the other part of the world. And, you know, the, we have this ongoing genocide in Afghanistan and Iraq that, that for some reason, for some reason, through the propaganda or whatever, these uh, dominant genetic lines of the people in the United States from, from those that are uh, European in, in nature and those that are not. So we have a lot of the social engineering programming. But it's like, how, how can these people not care? Or embrace the golden rule or see how this can go really really wrong for a, for the United States with its uh, defenses down because history shows history shows again my concerns where are these coming from combination of intuition combination of common sense I've cited the fall of Berlin when uh, Russian troops invaded that city you know most of the men were were fighting you have the captured Nazis, you have the period of the Nuremberg trials, and they went to town raping the women. The Japanese did the same thing to the Chinese. And so when you read stories, first of all, about it happening in our day and age to Afghan women, to Iraqi women, of course to little boys, to men, even stories of men being raped. Of course you saw you know, the, the pictures of the men being stripped and dogs barking at them. That was mild. They admit there's thousands of, of, of other documents that haven't been released because it's it's too over the top. Because of the nature, because it was that extreme, whatever was in those pictures, the torture pictures of the Afghanis and Iraqis, they won't release it due to the level of how extreme it was. Now sit on that. And of course they show the video on CNN of the US troops pissing on the bodies of Afghans. Then you see other stories, NATO troops, Nazi NATO troops run around with cut off fingers of Afghans, a necklace of cut off fingers. Of course, some of you have heard stories about some of the atrocities that have happened to the Native Americans, where their skin was peeled off their body. It is happening again. Instead of the reality of the real Afghan being presented to the world, the nomadic traveling, and that's the case of a lot of Afghans. Not Taliban members or those serving the Taliban, but people living out in the countryside. Off the grid, if you will. That's right. Off the grid in Afghanistan. Oh, yeah. Let's drown the goat herder. Yeah, let's talk shit about a person living off the grid in America, too, with his horse. Yeah, look at that hick down there with his horse. And his donkey and his dog. Fuck him. Drone him. See, what, what I'm... What, get his daughter. Yeah, look at, look at that daughter there. What, what I'm trying to explain to you is... When you understand how evil works and how karma works, they, they've convinced a grotesque number of Americans to be okay with what's happening to the people over there. From their targeting to their rape to the drone attacks on those people. And if you look at what's happening with this coming third world war, the United States has given Chinese technology, the CCP technology, advanced technology, you can start with the Clinton Foundation and the missile technology transfers, which I've talked about for years and people just kind of looked over and, oh, but they'll bring it out and use it to support Trump and attack Clinton. But they won't be able to see Trump's corruption as well or potential corruption behind the scenes. That's not currently revealed now, but will tomorrow or next year. You know, so they have everybody confused. So they talk about World War III to get people ready for it. And to go as far as to propagandize here in the United States for people to be pro-Russia. We know what Russia's past is. Who cares if it was called the Soviet Union then? And it's perceived to be something different now. You know, we could see how RT uses sex to sell, for example and propaganda to push its own line. We've seen even RT, which is so trusted by Americans looking outside the mainstream media here in the United States, looking for another. And then you see the anti-gun positions that they've taken. You know, we've seen how some of these protests believed to be all funded by Soros. How Russia today is there at the front lines covering some of those very same protests. 
as well as Occupy. Oh, then there'll be a headline on RT. Guantanamo Bay in the United States. They're just disappearing people left and right. And while, you know, there are some allegations that some of that's going on to make it seem that it's at the extent that it's happening to Middle Eastern people in other countries that it's, you know, oh, making it bigger than what it actually is and crying wolf. That discredits any argument. It really doesn't matter what the argument is. When you start exaggerating, and we see how Alex Jones, for example, does this, and we wondered for years before he really came out of the closet in defense of the establishment via Trump. We wondered for years why he was grossly exaggerating certain numbers and estimates when the man seemed to be intelligent with a semi-photographic memory. Now it's much more clear. When you grossly exaggerate facts, figures, and numbers, you contaminate your overall argument of whatever it is you're saying. Whatever it is that you're saying. We can see how Trump is contaminating genuine arguments. He's attracting people to the table with genuine discussions that like the way he talks to them. But then it comes with all this other stuff that divides the country and is uh, preparing us for civil unrest. So I've called Trump as the next uh, president. But I've also seen how if they go with Clinton as a selection either now or in 2020, you know, if this is going to be like something out of a Simpsons episode, if you will, for those familiar with the predictive programming Trump Clinton episode, where Trump's the president first, and then, you know, Hillary comes in through the character of Lisa, the Lisa Hillary cross character in the year 2020, or right after. Being that I think a lot of this is going to be kicking off or after 2021, and full on occupation in the United States by 2025 by foreign troops with established military bases in certain areas and territories that they're able to control, but they won't be able to control the whole nation. And so I've warned about West Coast cities, easy to access from the Chinese Navy. We look at Portland, Oregon with its history of human trafficking. Out of that region, you go to the old West days, they literally kidnapped the first Portlanders. Miners, loggers, sailors, men would wind up in Portland, they would get drunk, they would chase prostitutes, and they would find themselves drugged or knocked out with a blackjack, kicked down a series of stairs, in some cases their shoes were moved, and having to face broken glass if they tried to escape, many men found themselves shanghaied out of Portland, Oregon, the west coast United States, headed for China and other places, were sometimes just murdered out to sea. And they would go out the Columbia River and they would go out to uh, Astoria, which is a coastal town, and they would be out to sea. So all of these crimps were operating in Portland at that time. And uh, you can actually watch my, after this, and comment up on it if you're going to listen to this, go watch my Oregon Shanghai episode. I think it may be 319. I'm not sure. Just type in my name and Oregon Shanghai. And I talk about this for an hour, but I'm giving you a brief summary and why. Because we're able to see back then in the, uh, you know, we, we talk about the years, the 1870s, the 1880s, how these corrupted gangster New Englanders that came to Portland that set up the trafficking industry, the crimps, how they worked with uh, the captains of the ships that would come in through the Columbia River. And this was before cell phones. Uh, this was before landlines, I believe. Of course, we had the telegraph wire system then, okay. Um, but a lot of things were organized, word of mouth, face-to-face, -face, old school, if you will, before technology, you know, of course, before computers. So this was happening and the corruption was obviously uh, happening within the city of Portland. The New Englanders, the people from San Francisco, the, the, the elites of Portland at that time that owned the buildings that the brothels operated out of and the prostitutes being brought in, you know, to, to be a part of also uh, the money-making operation, prostitution, you know, paying off whatever they had to pay to get to Portland. But of course, to dupe men that have uh, take too many drugs or, or drank too much, into certain alleys where the bouncer or another gangster would come around, knock them upside the head, knock them out in some way, shape, or form, maybe with a knuckle duster, brass knuckles, or a blackjack, and literally kick them down some stairs. Okay, so that, that is some organized kidnapping for that day and age, and that is some ruthless 
behavior caused by environmental causes and conditions. The horrible things that women do to men and the horrible things that men do to women and humans do to humans. Men and women, women and men, as I go back and forth to make sure everybody understands how both sexes are responsible for how we ended up in this mess and how we're going to see great evil from both sexes tomorrow. Now, we're already reading today, fast forward, Portland, Oregon, that child sex trafficking is like number three in some cases, even number one, based on the year, based on FBI investigations, not city of Portland investigations, FBI investigations where they found runaways that were trafficked by pimps in a multi-state sex operation. A certain amount came out of Portland, Oregon. So Portland, Oregon today, you know, this, this, this at one point major epicenter of people disappearing. Today has it happening again. And, and it's not where it's going to be. It's like a buildup. So you look at the Chinese Navy and you look at the possible entry points in the United States. You have Seattle, you have Portland, Oregon, you have San Francisco, you have Los Angeles, you know, the Bay Area, you have all of these areas that are actually very easy for ships and or submarines to come in with their missiles to attack at a closer distance. As we've read many reports of Russian and submarine, Russian submarine, Chinese submarine, nuclear powered for years getting close to the US borders. So all this has been building. All this has been building, but yet the American people aren't going, why aren't these issues being talked about? Why isn't Trump saying something about this? Why is he willing to get so cozy to Russia? What the fuck is really going on here? And as Putin sets as Russia's selection, what will his role be? Because he's being built up for some sort of global populist position. It's obvious. The guy's no angel, yet he's being presented as an angel. When you see that depth of propaganda to build up anyone, and you see like, you know, in this theater of war, good cop, bad cop, Obama, bad cop, using NATO, at Russia's doorstep, bad, bad Obama, Putin, good, martial artist, judo, charismatic, has actual muscles, probably could actually knock Obama out in several seconds. And then you see the fake stare down, WE style. <clears throat> so what I'm communicating to women is that they are setting the United States up for a fall. And like in other countries, when women are often trafficked and raped by foreign troops, and sometimes... Um, you know, during economic collapses, men and women of their own society trading them as well because of the hot commodity. Here's a hot body. She's 13, 14. This is what I want for her. This type of nonsense. Then we see the psychobabble talk within our own country about people robbing other people of their stuff. I think there's going to be a lot of Americans robbing a lot of other Americans of, of their women. And it's going to be like something out of a bad movie. And there's going to be, a, I've talked about this for years. And that's why I'm echoing my warnings that I've mentioned for years. Because maybe some more women are receptive to what I've said now or what I'm explaining now with a lot of this together. And then, of course, maybe it's just going to be the same experience it's been the last 10 years. Oh, Alex is crazy. But there's got to be at least a few of you that are female that are able to see this. It, it can't just be none. There's got to be at least one that's able to comment in the section and say, I see this deception. I see this new world order war on the feminine and how it's even coming through this this Clinton thing and Clinton the devil woman and I want to talk about pornography briefly you know if you looked at what was um, available when it came out the black and white pictures it was simple nudity uh, to moving to actual sex acts to some of them arguably becoming more obscene I'm not trying to be a prude that's not what I'm doing um, I'm also sharing that you don't have to be into certain things that are out there regarding pornography today to be aware that there are millions that are into such things. So sometimes it just takes a little bit of investigation and sometimes we as men are a little more curious sexually regarding imagery because of how our brain works. It's literally a different brain chemistry than a female's. 
uh, in how there can be you know that type of uh, arousal response to digital imagery. So there's a reason why some men explore and are curious what's out there. And in doing so, you can see things that disgust you and make you go, this is the type of stuff that they make available to little kids. This is the type of stuff that most of the studios are making now instead of just regular porn. And then it gets really, really creepy. So I'm going to tell you right now, from some of the stuff that I've seen out there on the web, that's freaked me out. I can see how they're trying to mind control a certain amount of the population to be in a certain state of consciousness. Do you know what um, two of the main forms of toxic porn pornography are that are easily accessible to little kids? And not just not just think little kids in our country. Um, think about young kids that are maybe 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and then moving up into other young adult years, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. In other countries, China, Russia, Europe. Okay, so there's, there's a form of porn that's 3D alien pornography. Okay, and, and that's its own labyrinth to where it, it's very disturbing to think about men masturbating to, to videos, first of all, of alien beings straight from various movies and making it very accessible and linking kids over to it. They're playing video games. Like, you know, um, there are certain sites where you watch just regular movies, regular movies like Netflix, but for free. And it'll pop up to certain, um, Website saying come to this video game website showing a sexy elf like something too sexy for a child to be targeted with like some sort of a video game porn And so of course these things probably add viruses to the computer. I don't ever click on those But when I see them pop up on these mainstream video sites, I'm like this is how they're probably one of the ways targeting children with pop-ups to visit sites they normally wouldn't find do you understand what I'm saying? I'm talking about deliberately targeting to kids that aren't necessarily even looking for it. That are just sitting there watching a movie or playing video games. And some video game porn looking stuff pops up featuring women in certain costumes from the old world, you know, magical, black magic, medieval, from the kingdom, from the old world, the medieval age. A lot of the medieval themes are really raging at this time. The medieval chick and the actual, you know, outfit, uh, you know, with the cross, with the cross and shield. Miss Rothschild, babe. With the red eyes, the elf warrior. So I don't know what's going on with all that, but it's obviously very strong. And coming through so that's one of the ways I think that they um, of course they can tell probably whether you're male or female so I'm not sure all the different ways in which women are targeted uh, but I can certainly say I feel like I can detect in which ways in which they pull men in I also opened up a computer uh, when I was staying with some uh, yoga chicks in 2009 and I saw how they turned on me simply because I was different and actually trying to warn people about the swine flu vaccine then. They thought that was crazy. But uh, one of the websites one of the chicks was on was hogtide.com, which features women in bondage being spread out and then being uh, um, gang screwed or uh, screwed by multiple men that are simulating a rape of a woman. And this was on a, uh, a female's computer. Again, a female's computer. And... Uh, I, I broke a cardinal rule. I was just, I, my computer wasn't working. I want to check my email and I popped open someone's computer. And Hotmail is H O T M A I L dot com. Hotmail dot com. Hogtie dot com is H O G. So when you type the H O to Hotmail, the Hogtide, do you, did you mean go revisit where you previously left your cookies? You know, is basically what the computer is doing. And so I just wanted to share that. And then this is not just a thing targeted towards males, the rape fantasy stuff. It's the females. And the second type of pornography after alien is men in uniform or police uniform or security outfits raping women that are obviously being imprisoned through some sort of a checkpoint system. So it is obvious to me that they are using pornography on one end to create fantasies in the minds of some young 
some young men that may be in different countries, may be in special forces later on, maybe in our own country, you know, and they've been facing this heartbreak and divide and, you know, no feminine love in their lives. There's, there's great darkness that can follow. It doesn't make it right. It's wrong. It's wrong when men take uh, revenge against women for the pain that, you know, happened to them at the hands of their mother or their sister or, you know, some girl earlier in life. And there are some men that are apparently so psycho uh, because that's the programming. Just get back in revenge and look at all the Afghans that have been killed since 9-11. Blame for some event that was actually staged. See, these things should show you that the uh, revenge rape psychology is alive and well within our own society. One of the best examples to actually demonstrate the murder of all these people in the Middle East. And all of it, I mean, a lot of these women have been sexually violated and turned into prostitutes since the U.S. troops have actually been um, been occupying there. There are, uh, apparently I've read on NPR articles, you know, because I haven't been there, but porn has exploded in mainstream bazaars and uh, markets. Uh, bazaar, which is, I, I guess, a, a term for market. In Iraq, in Baghdad, Iraq, do you realize how sad that is? Do you really think those women are being liberated? You know, so they're they're being featured. And who cares whether having sex with an Iraqi or an American man? Doesn't matter. It's a woman being forced into prostitution so she can eat and feed her kids. This is sick. And even if we have sexual feelings, uh, and there are things that are embedded within us, um, that's one thing. It's another to actually extract actual real life pain and, and uh, to to be receiving pleasure from hurting someone else, to be torturing someone else, you know, to be to be raping someone's children in front of the parents. See, and a lot of this torture has actually been going on to the people overseas. And you know what what I speculate has happened is, you know, you you have enough men that are. Um, Disconnected from, of course, their higher self that have probably already engaged in a few murders already, and they're already walking on the dark side. And so, you know, you have these wolf packs where there's a pact, and of course, you know, people that aren't going to go along with that type of thing, they're they're usually weeded out of some of those groups. You know, those special black 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 ops. You know, it's a special operation. <laughs> uh, and and Casualties of War is a decent movie that kind of highlights this. But you don't see movies like that depict what they've done in Iraq and Afghanistan. That movie was about Vietnam and depicted the casualties of war. And Sean Penn is um, is portraying an American soldier raping a Vietnamese woman. And um, there's Michael J. Fox uh, playing a character as well who's, I mean, he really goes through a lot uh, because he's against this. Um there's some sort of a firefight at the end. But I think that a lot of men today suffering from PTSD, part of it's from what they've done to other people overseas. It's not just the toxins that they've breathed. And part of it is the stuff they've seen happen to others at the hands of others that they haven't yet spoken out against. And I think those former uh, Marines should be speaking out. And I don't think that you're going to heal from PTSD if you just focus on your own wounds and what happened to you. If you stay in a selfish state of mind. And there's a lot of... Uh, men that have been out for a period of years uh, that aren't getting better, they're getting worse because they're not actually dealing with any form of healing. They're not actually showing remorse. Uh, they're not actually speaking on YouTube or opening up websites or writing articles. Certainly no one's sending me anything. Uh, and I think there's a reason why Marines and veterans and people that have actually murdered others and have known people that have murdered stay away from this program. If anything, there might be Marines and veterans that haven't seen this recent combat or they served during Vietnam or they served during, you know, maybe World War II or Korea or they served during some of those operations in the 1980s, uh, but they haven't served in Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, you know, only one, but he never actually saw combat. <laughs> Uh, and his name is Reed Davis out of Dallas, Texas. He uh, he only went to basic training and had some legal issues come up. He was uh, found drunk in his car by the police. And so he had court pending. And I think this is how divine intervention has happened in a number of men's lives. There's a number of uh, people out there with stories like mine because I was going to go into the Navy. That's right, in 2000, and 2000 the year before 9-11, uh, the drugs that I uh, started with in 99 fucked me up and brought me to such a low level. By 2000, I was willing to go into the Navy to get straight. 
I was willing to go into the armed forces. That's how low, that's how low my brief heroin addiction took me. That I was ready to go in the armed forces to find out who I am and, 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 and allow myself to get some military discipline to find myself. That's where heroin took me. And, and one of the greatest bottoms that I was ever in was in 2000, that same year in which uh, I showed up at the Navy's doorstep. And uh, I had court pending, and so they were not interested because they just knew this guy's probably going to get caught up in the drug war. Talked about having possession. I told him the whole story. I, I got caught with the substance. Okay, well, you're probably going to have a felony conviction, and we can't take you in. And so I've talked to, uh, to a number of other men out there that have had this form of divine intervention in their lives uh, to where they had some sort of a DUI or nothing serious, but just something that wrapped them up, you know, young men caught up in the criminal justice system, not realizing that they're being a dumb 18 year old or 19 year old. And that's not a misdemeanor young man. It's a fucking felony. And certain things are automatically felonies. Even if it's your first time offense, doesn't matter. You, you know, you can only spend maybe a few weeks or months in the slammer or maybe not even that. Felony is still a felony and prohibits you from owning a firearm and certain things in this country and serving in the armed forces. And I'm telling you what, being a felon can sometimes be a blessing and keep you out of certain dangerous circumstances. Oh, it's definitely problematic when you're being told that you can't own a firearm. It also forces you to be a man in another respect to where I rely, first of all, on my hands and whatever's around me. And if I die, I die. What a painful world. At least I want to get the good stuff done that's going to enrich my soul and help me evolve out of this place by the time I'm murdered, if that's going to be my fate. And then, of course, I live um, each day of the fullest to the best of my ability, more so as the days go on. And if uh, it's my destiny to be an old man on this planet, you know, and see a lot of things come to pass, I'm okay with that, too. Definitely not going to manifest my own murder, but I'm not going to live in fear of it. I'm not going to live in fear of it. I'm going to do the right thing. And I think that I hit a nerve when I talk about this plan to turn the white woman of America into uh, something that is hunted. And it's something that I feel is, is obvious by seeing the media, by seeing how they've just created a society where we're so obsessed on the flesh, where selling sex and human trafficking has actually become somewhat of an institution within our society. Uh, when you see the amount of uh, sexual abuse that's gone on towards women already in our prison system and mental hospitals, uh, when you see what happens to certain women when they uh, become homeless, uh, how they're targeted. We see uh, the average age of 13, we see Portland, Oregon, with a sex trafficking problem, not a whole lot of evolution, really, if we look at the past Portland and today. Oh, no, it's not officially uh, happening at the hands of uh, mainstream Portlanders, but it's a city that somehow is enabling the behavior or has causes and conditions, even energies, vibrations, that are of the unseen realms that a lot of humans want to deny and overlook, that are actually influencing an environment to continue to be an environment of s and &M behind-the-scenes, aggressive sexuality, suppressed sexuality, which is actually the root of it. All these men and women that have not actually had anyone make love to them for so many years with all this deep-seated aggressive sexuality, also being taught to, to dislike and distrust other men and women and themselves and their bodies. Oh, you're too fat. Oh, you're too thin. You're not big enough. You're not white enough. You're not dark enough. You're white. Oh, you're dark. Let's just freak out about every fucking thing. And that's what they've done. And it hasn't gone into recession. They've they've expanded the gender wars like never before. And that's why I had to get out of Portland, Oregon, because I came to the determination that this level of social engineering that has taken the gender wars and the divide between man and woman, the fact that it hasn't gone into restoration, like I, I can understand if it's a cyclical thing. Like, okay, solar flares, now we're now we're going to the breakup time, and, and now it's the time to actually come back and sacred masculine and feminine to find itself and it's like I'm I'm still waiting <laughs> I still have my youth and my looks I, I'm not seeing other women out there that are even close to being interested in the things that I'm interested in I would have heard from them already I would have heard from them already 
Instead, I've, I've just heard from the weirdest of the weird or people that are just uh, game players in their own right. <laughs> but I've also kept a lot of um, bad influence away from me. By talking about these issues, certain women don't contact me that normally would have contacted me five years ago. And it's good for me to uh, live more like a, a monk, speaking uh, these ideas from a place of safety in the mountains. And I have compassion. I feel like there is a, a feminine and masculine within me, so I, I resent all of the resentment that's been thrown towards me. Well, why, you're a man. Why would you? Why not? I'm a human being. I don't have any sisters that I know of. I guess my father did remarry back in 2000s. I have a half sister and I may never meet her because of, I'm sure all the horrible things that's been said to her about me. Maybe she'll be a, another answeree that won't be curious about um, a family member of hers and what he's saying on YouTube, like so many other answerees and answeree females. Even though they're Afghans, they, they, they don't see any value in the things that I'm talking about. So this is not just about genetics. This is about working over the collective mind of today's female that is influenced by technology. You know, uh, directing them not towards the divine feminine and care for all females, but the narcissist and what they get from this physically based society. And that's what it is in a nutshell. And I'm telling you, I think that we can look at history as our guide, whether we look at Rome or Nazi Germany or other places in history to where they have, they have directed the women of the society in a particular manner. And they've directed the militaries of some of these societies in a certain manner and maybe centralized things in order to, um, centralize the economy in order to destruct it later on and, and turn the men into mercenaries and the women into prostitutes. This is ancient. This is ancient. This does go back to Rome. And we are in the modern Rome. Some say it's the new Atlantis. As the Masons founded this country and envisioned it as the modern Atlantis. Well, didn't Atlantis sink? And aren't there some of us that are like remnants from the old Atlantis that have found ourselves back in this matrix from old deeds? I mean, this whole thing is just getting very, very circular. You could say this whole thing is just getting very, very weird, but it's actually very, very circular and very, very perfect and very, very big picture when you go beyond one lifetime and, and you look at this from a multi-lifetime perspective at all the different backgrounds that some of these souls may have. You know, people have hypothesized, well, what happened to the Nazis? What happened to the stormtroopers? What happened to certain souls? And you certainly do not want to blame victims of war or assume that all the victims of war or all women that, that are raped have bad karma or all men that have had bad things happen to them, that's bad karma. But there, there can be, there possibly could be things that carry over from other lifetimes. And whether, you know, they can remember it or not, sometimes there are certain things that happen uh, because of things that have been done. But that is not the only reason why some unfortunate things happen to good people. And I want to make sure that whenever I bring up the conversation of karma, you know, I, I want to make sure that I'm very specific about that. Bad things can happen to good people. And why is a much larger question. And we should pursue the answers, the questions that we have about why things happen. Why everything happens for a reason in some way, shape, or form. So is this universe an accident? That's the one thing I, I see a little bit of um, a disagreement from other Gnostic researchers. Is this universe really an accident if Sophia or Sophia was a perfect being? That does not make sense, just like aspects of the Old Testament do not make sense. I still see a lot of truth in, in the Gnostic texts, but um, if Sophia, the earth goddess, the spirit uh, that is uh, within this earth, that some call Gaia, but uh, is Sophia was perfect, uh, the universe and that which she created would not be imperfect. It would be a part of the matrix. It, it would have its, its purpose and intention. So there is purpose and intention why we're in this realm. In this realm of sex and violence, violence and sex, there's so much that runs off those primal energies. And when you misuse sex in the form of rape, 
And when you misuse the, the, the divine ability that we have, martial arts, to protect ourselves with our hands, which is a very spiritual thing, and you use it to harm others, and you combine the two, military invasions into countries or horrible things happen to the women once they contain the men, oh, this is a bad, bad, bad chain reaction. And we incarnated into a realm where a lot of this is going down. You've heard about people telling the gangbangers in the 80s and 90s, stop blaming each other for all these past murders. Peace in the streets. And we've seen various periods in which, you know, you saw this aspect of consciousness try to come in and interrupt that Archon program. Who cares if he killed your brother, sister, blah, blah, blah. You need to end the violence. Now, that is a microcosm of what needs to happen on a macrocosm. Because these dark and unseen forces are penetrating the minds of these dark warriors. And I mean on a spiritual sense, not a skin tone. And they think they can go into some of these areas and rape and destroy and kill and they're getting back at some other group. You know, people are saying drone them all in reference to the Afghan people. And then you have other white people that are not like outraged and like freaked out about this. And I'm going, what is it about your consciousness or your whatever you're vibrating at that's not up in arms about this? This is not a good sign. It's not a good sign. It's a sign to me that you're allowing it, that you're not alarmed, and if that's the case, the way things work in this universe, do unto others as you would have them unto you. And it's like that, you know, warning from one of the founding fathers about, you know, having great concern that um, God is just because of all that this country has done. The concept of justice, what goes around comes around. Karma is not the only world that that word that comes up or concept, but it's the concept of things revolving back around that which we create, that which we do to others. And then we have Ron Paul in the what if speech of 2009. And what if Chinese soldiers were stationed in Texas? And how would Americans respond? And how would those Americans be treated if they were captured? Called terrorists. And we see this thing happening today in other seas overseas so they've they've armed the population really with their own tracking devices and they've taken the actual physical male protector through the social engineering of the gender wars away from today's woman her alone in her apartment independent but actually very dependent she's more dependent than ever on her job remaining uh, on her making a certain amount of money and without her making a certain amount of money to to pay for that apartment and all of that this this supposed freedom was was all about uh, it, she takes on a lot of stress and along with that stress maybe some alcoholism maybe some other issues and then of course maybe other financial issues uh, warping her perception of other men of course all of this focus live in the cities pay a certain amount for your rent by paying into something that you're not going to own it changes who you are it changes your energy it actually connects you uh, with the energy vampire of the system or dark grid of the archons it keeps you connected with the archons you stay courted with the archons constantly paying for something that you're never going to own and being in a state of fear of not having enough to make it and then, of course, being this mindset, this is what it's all about, being independent, being on your own, and just being this, this perfect little tax-paying slave. And so we've been taken out of a natural environment where during the Depression, as you know, 90% were off the grid. It was a normal thing. These people didn't have big commercial septic toilet systems either back in that day. All this stuff came later. All this crap came later. And it's fucked up the minds of the last few generations to where they don't even know what time it is. They don't even recognize themselves in the mirror. I mean, this is um, this is um, an incarnation for me that is very difficult. It is very difficult to... First of all, be of the racial um, makeup of that which is being droned back into the Stone Age, but not completely mixed and actually warning the country that's doing the attack and invading and their women and being ignored wholesale and actually being as far told by women that I am evil for bringing this up and that I want to see this happen to others. It was just one female that said this to me in a bar in Portland where I was talking about some of my politics and concerns, but I honestly felt intuitively that she represented the views of others. 
and being told when I was growing up by the person that brought me into this world that I was naturally negative about certain things. I saw that attitude towards me as a prototype attitude of everything about Alex Answer being negative and seeing in reality mischievous forces influencing those constantly insulting and degrading me when I am actually on this planet to help. And it is still ongoing. And I am going to ride out that lightning of pain. And elaborate on what it is that I've been warning about so many years in conclusion. Clean up your karma. A lot of these uh, populated urban environments are going to be overrun with human traffickers. And there can be connections between cartel groups, locals, and foreign troops that are using the black market and, and you know, there could even be posters and certain, you know, we're looking for girls that look like this, of this size. Or, you know, that's going to be a, you know, a little bit more of an extreme, but I think a lot of it's going to be happening underground in the black market. You can even see perhaps a, a, an Americans for Sale dot com. And as we see the internet handed over with more influence, it's going to come from China and Russia and expect a YouTube doomsday. It's only a matter of time before some of these channels or the whole thing goes down if these things come into motion. So that's my warning. We'll talk about uh, preventative measures, spiritual growth, being a good person, you know, the podcasts, all things that can help prevent bad things from happening to good people. I'm Alex Ansari, sign off November 5th, 2016.